everyone welcome or welcome back today i'm going to be answering some of your questions that i gathered from tiktok instagram and my patreon so this is probably going to be one of if not the last video that i make here in north carolina before we do our cross-country move honestly i can't believe i just said that <laughs> still incredibly bizarre to me that we're moving across the country and I don't know, two, three weeks now. As I mentioned before on my channel, we are moving to the Pacific Northwest. I have lived in North Carolina most of my life. I have been here since 1998. So moving away from North Carolina is bittersweet and I mentioned it before uh, because I've lived here for so long. It is truly my home. I have always wanted to move back to the Pacific Northwest. It is where my family and I lived before we moved to North Carolina. And I still have some of my favorite childhood memories there, like learning how to ride a bike, also taking the ferry over to Woodby Island, ice cream trucks. Ironically, it's like one of my peak childhood memories there and like getting the ice cream that is like the monster, but the eyes are bubble gum. Those are the types of memories that I have in Washington. It's pretty surreal for me and my husband to be moving to the Pacific Northwest and I cannot wait to take you all along with me. So with that said, I absolutely expect my practice to change drastically when we move. When we move. Practice is really centered around my local community and where I'm located. So with us being at a completely different side of the country it's just going to shift in such a way that i don't really have expectations for i'm totally wide open i'm really excited to share that with you all and see what happens but with that being said i get asked some questions um, about myself or my practice more so my witchcraft practice than um, me personally totally okay so i try to answer as much as i can when i see the questions come up but funny enough, I only recently noticed, and this might be kind of dumb of me, I've only recently noticed that I had questions on my TikTok platform. I remember the Q&A box popping up, but I never got notifications when people actually submitted questions. So because TikTok is such a very quick platform and people's attention spans are a little bit shorter i thought that answering the questions on tiktok here on my youtube channel will be more beneficial in case that there are questions that i can go to a little bit more in depth and provide some of my personal experience along with the answer so we're gonna go ahead and get to your questions first questions that i'm going to answer are going to be on tiktok a lot of the questions are very similar to one another so if i don't get to yours it's because i may have already provided an answer that um, kind of responds to yours as well. So if there is anything that I haven't covered or haven't answered that you're still very curious about, please feel free to drop it in the comments below. First question, I'm just gonna work from the newest to the oldest because I guess that's how the how it displays. I saw your video about the cleansing pot and I have so many questions and finding a lot of different answers from Google etc and was wondering if you could help. So a simmer pot is something that I like to do. It is a very simple spell and accessible to a lot of people because you will need access to a pot, access to a stove top, water as well as any corresponding herbs. Some of these herbs can already be found in your kitchen cabinet and if there's anything specific that you are wanting you can perhaps forage it in your local community or you can go to your local metaphysical or apothecary shop. In the beginner witch spell video I talk about a home protection simmer pot using the ingredients orange, cinnamon, and rosemary. These ingredients can also be purchased at your local grocery store and I personally like to use fresh ingredients especially if I'm using like lemons or oranges or apples because the aroma is much stronger and it just makes it smell really nice. You can use dried herbs if you have access to that currently. Like I said in that previous video, I also like to request from each ingredient what their specific role is into the overall spell. So for example, I covered about rosemary, just reaffirming any boundaries with the home, and then orange cleansing away any old or stagnant energy. How you go about this is entirely up to you and your personal practice. You don't have to do it the same way, it just um, depends on what aligns with you and what you've been doing currently 
or if you're new and just like not quite sure how to start, I would go ahead and pop over to that video and just see how my approach is, see if it resonates with you. And don't be afraid to kind of tweak it into to fit into your craft. I hope that answered the question. I wasn't sure because they had said I have so many questions. Um, I guess like if you, if the person sees this video, if there are any specific questions that you have, um, please leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them directly. So next question. Hello, I feel like I have been surrounded by so much negative energy recently as well in my home. Besides a simmer pot, are there any natural methods? There are so many ways of cleansing energy within your home. It's going to be hard for me to go through every single remedy that you can do. I will instead share some of my favorites. But aside from a simmer pot, if you are able to, you can also use smoke cleansing. I do have pets, so whenever I do a smoke cleanse, I do make sure that I open the windows and doors so that the smoke has somewhere to go. Um, but you can use incense, you can also have loose incense and create your own loose incense blend depending on what herbs you have available to you. I personally like to create my own loose incense blends with my apothecary, so I will use a lot of lavender. Um, I will also use other herbs such as Verbane or St. John's Wort, which is really great for protection. The process is a little bit different um, because I do have a ritual that I do when I do when I do burn incense throughout the home because it's a little bit more of a stronger protection and cleansing ritual versus a simmer pot. My simmer pot spells tend to be a little bit more of like the first offense and then the second offense will be smoke if I continue to feel that stagnant and ill will within the home. It doesn't really come to that but it is also just really good to do as a routine whereas for me a simmer pot is really good for once a week and then a good smoke cleanse is on a monthly basis which I like to do at the end of the month to bring in the new month. Um, just kind of like part of my cleansing and protection of the home. You can also use sound for cleansing your home if you feel like it's really stagnant. I also like to play my favorite playlist, like some really happy, upbeat music, especially if you're feeling a little bit down and in the slums. I like I promise you music is actually one of my favorite remedies something about playing music especially your favorite playlist within the home it does perk up the energy I decided to do like to play a cleansing um, like frequency channel for the like for a few moments until like you kind of feel like it's, it's you know cleared away and then to call in some good energy Play your favorite playlist and also enchant um, your cleaning supplies so for example I have a lemon like citrus smelling cleanser that I have enchanted with the intention to remove any negativity or ill will best way of really like cleansing your home is to mundane cleanse your home and use corresponding ingredients and enchant them with the intention to banish any ill will or negativity and get in the corners. Like, I think that this is something that people tend to miss. Get in the corners of each room and, and if there's any room, like a closet that doesn't really get a lot of attention, clean it out. <laughs> I think you'd be surprised at how much better the home feels and the energy overall after a really good cleaning and a good cleanse. So some other cleansing remedies such as a floor wash. So you can use pine sole if you don't have pets. Um, if you do use pine sole and you have pets, just make sure you dilute it because it is harmful to them. There are other ingredients that you can use such as um, white vinegar, warm water, a little bit of dish soap, I actually have a YouTube video of like cleansing, a cleansing ritual that you can do. Um, it is really just cleaning the floor with a floor wash with corresponding ingredients as well as using that same solution to take a washcloth and also wipe down the thresholds of your home so that includes like your doorways and you can dispose this either down the drain um, or you can dispose it away from your home it just depends on where you're specifically located and if you can do so i live in an apartment building so i don't really have access to like throw out the solution and any energy that it may have captured i simply throw it down my sink and it's been fine all that to say 
clean, deep clean your home. Do that first. If for some reason you still feel like there's negative energy, I would then move forward into either sound cleansing or a summer pot or smoke cleansing. Hope that answered your question. <laughs> what are your favorite books to study folk magic? I want to practice the same type of magic as you. So when it comes to folk magic, I always recommend to start in a specific area first and I tend to recommend looking towards your own like ancestor he, um, history. So for example, I've talked about it plenty of times on my channel. When I started to research my ancestry, I found that my father's side was deeply rooted in the Appalachian Mountains. Therefore, I started to learn about Appalachian folk magic, which then led me to further ancestors being from Britain, England, Ireland, and Scotland. And so now I'm in the process of researching some folk magic within these areas. The thing about folk magic is that it's going to be different region to region. So even if you are researching like English folk magic, it's going to be different from like Northern England to like the the west like the west coastline like it's it's all going to be very different this is just because of the history and the people that lived there and just what their beliefs were you may find you may find like some similarities between regions like maybe they all use red thread but they have a different process of what like what they use it for find a region that um, resonates with you that makes sense um, I would even recommend starting with where you're at now and if you live in North America. There is so much folk magic within North America that I think a lot of the times as Americans we kind of dismiss because perhaps it's that question of whether or not it's okay. Um, and that's kind of, that's a different topic for a different day. It's just like the research behind the folk magic that we find in North America, where it comes from, um, because there are going to be some practices that are closed and require initiation. So that is something that I also recommend um, when you go about your research of folk magic within North America to just cross-reference and be careful that you're not treading into water that um, you're not supposed to be in or I will say that you will see a lot of um, Like similarities and like I said before like it depends on the region It depends on what material was provided and accessible because for example Honey is something that is accessible to a lot of people and it you will see it being used across many different practices It just depends on how it's being used so honey itself is not like a closed ingredient but if you are using it in a way that mirrors how it's being used in a practice that is closed that is where you have to be very careful that you're not treading into water that you're not supposed to be treading into so with that being said how do I research folk magic? my first recommendation is your local library it is free and you will be very surprised at what information you find there. Research the history of the town that you live in, um, any sort of like local festivals that they may have. I would also look at, um, you know, researching the local flora and fauna in the area. And then that kind of gives you an idea of what is locally accessible to you. Another recommendation that I have is um, I think it's like JSTOR. It's like what um, a lot of institutions and academics use in terms of research and papers. So if you are in a university or institution and you have access to that, um, it's free. You can also sign up and read up to a hundred articles for free per month. So this is a very large library of a lot of information and you can research topics such as a specific region and then type in folklore or folk magic. You'd be surprised at how much comes up. This is a really good start into kind of furthering your research beyond books that we may see online or like at our local bookstore. Now on my other videos, um, such as the occult book haul, and I think there's another book haul, I have included some books that I'm currently reading um, in terms of like folk magic and folklore. So be sure to check those out and see if they resonate with you, see if they are 
um, of interest to you specifically for me it's more about Scottish folk magic and English folk magic so these are gonna be some books that I recommend and are currently reading to further my research. A book that I've started reading um, from my latest haul is The Witch's Cabinet by Corinne Boyer. It's plant lore, sorcery, and folk tradition so this talks a lot about specific plants that are associated with the witch. It's like this I think are really interesting when it comes to folk magic because we're looking at folklore and just stories that have been passed down on specific things that people did based on what was accessible to them. I hope that answered your question or at least gave you a good kind of starting point on where you may start. So I got asked what are some legit websites that have been useful information and aren't filled with misinformation wanting to do research to start my witch and spiritual journey. I really didn't used to be someone who enjoyed studying or, or like academics, but I can't tell you how insightful it is to read like researched articles and academic papers looking back through the history of witchcraft and witches because that has been truly so insightful to gain a better understanding of witchcraft found throughout history. Especially as a practitioner who focuses on folk magic and traditions, it has been super helpful to gain a better understanding and grasp a hold of the life of those who used to practice and what they practiced and why they did it. Google Books I think it is also has like some um, access to literature that was written by folklorists. Um, that is another thing that I recommend as well because folklorists are looking at the history um, and yeah I think that it's a really good start. In terms of books, I have plenty of books that I recommend to get started. Um, there is Folk Witchcraft by Roger J. Horn, which is really good, especially for the Solidary Witch. Really does cover a foundation of what folk witchcraft is. Um, so if that is something that you're interested in, I recommend that. Um, though I know this question is about websites, so that's why I recommended websites first, so. I love this one, okay. Which tarot card describes you best and why? So this is a fun question, um, and actually something that I have asked my ancestors through divination using their tarot deck, and the one card that they say that also resonates with me is the Page of Cups. That is because it is the cups, which is um, represents the element of water, and I am I do have water placements in my birth chart. I am a Cancer Sun, so I am very much someone who um, feels the emotions, very intuitive in touch with my emotions, though I do have um, a lot of other earth placements that tend to <sighs> ground me, <laughs> but also there's like that pull of feeling and also wanting to be grounded, so. I would say the Page of Cups and that's because I am very much a dreamer. Um, I am someone who loves to start new things. And I follow my heart and a lot of the decisions that I make, whether that be good or bad. Um, it hasn't failed me yet, so I think we're okay. The Page of Cups also reminds me of um, the inner child. And for a long time, I was focusing on inner child healing. And um, more recently, it has been more addressing my inner teenager, which I have been seeing a lot of people talk about more recently um, because I think a lot of the times we talk about inner child healing, but we can't dismiss the fact that we also have our teenage selves um, who also probably went through a lot. So that is where I'm currently at in terms of my personal healing journey. And the Page of Cups reminds me of, of, of an individual who is on a healing journey um, because it is an emotional card. Um, and it is the beginning of something. Hey friends, so editing here. Um, I did not realize that the camera cut me off. Mercury retrograde, thank you. So I just took out the question that I was answering um, when it cut me off altogether because I think it's a really good question and I'm just gonna add it to the part two. Um, so yeah, anyways, enjoy. Which is your most go-to tarot deck? So I use most often, the Pagan Other Worlds Tarot by Usi. Usi, I still don't know how to pronounce that. Um, this deck is specifically for my ancestors who I work with um, 
who are the spirits that I work with the most. The newest deck that I got is the Woodland Wardens, which is a great oracle deck um, for daily pulls. And then the deck that I use for um, Bridget is Leela and Olive, um, Ophidia Rosa Tarot. So this is her deck. This is my personal like reflection deck. And then I have Pagan Other Worlds for my ancestors. You don't necessarily have to do it that way, by the way, but that's just how I decided to. So those are the questions that I'm gonna get to today. Um, there are others and I will probably do a part two, but I'm gonna wait until we get settled into the Pacific Northwest. So I will be kind of a little MIA until we get uh, settled. So be sure to follow on other platforms because I will be sharing kind of like our journey along the way and um, yeah, that's gonna be a lot of fun. We're driving, so uh, that's gonna take a few days for us to do. If there are any questions that you have that you want me to answer in the next one, please let me know down in the comments. Other than that, I will see you next time.